this snake right here. I mean, what the heck is it? Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. I'm about to share with you a crazy ball python clutch that we hatched this morning that I'll be honest with you, I'm not even 100% sure what the genetics are, but there's some killer cool looking babies. I promise you guys an update from Speedy. So we're gonna go ahead and do Speedy Cam. And then later on, Lori, myself, and Noah are gonna be doing some kind of fun, cool thing for his vlog, but we'll show you some stuff here. We'll also just check and see what else is going on at BHB. What do you say together we make this an amazing day? Can you do me a favor really quick? Can you hit that like button so we can get this video up to as many likes as possible? And remember, always comment. I love reading your comments. Regardless, let's go ahead and get this day started. So as a snake breeder, I'll be honest, every clutch you hatch is absolutely incredible. And if it isn't, then you probably shouldn't be working with snake because as soon as I don't get excited about the least exciting clutch I should probably find another profession that being said I always love that once or twice a year I get really surprised by a clutch in this case it happens to be a ball python clutch now we bred a pastel ivory which is a white snake which is the super version of yellow belly to a spinner which is a pinstripe spider now you should really get pinstripe yellow belly spider yellow bellies and spinner yellow bellies but that's not what happened. We got some crazy stuff and I'm not exactly sure how to explain it. Let's get started by looking at this animal here. Now this actually kind of looks like a lemon blast yellow belly, but what's interesting is look at this interesting stripe down its back. That's something that you really would never see in a lemon blast, which is a pastel pinstripe. So there's something else going on in this clutch. That was like the first thing that I said, oh, that's kind of interesting. But this animal alone wouldn't really blow me away. Nor would this animal here, which is just really a classic pinstripe yellow belly. So again, didn't think much of it because that works out, but this next animal is what started to throw me into what the heck is this? And that's this snake right here. I mean, what the heck is it? I was not expecting this at all. I mean, the pattern and color is absolutely insane. Now there happens to be something that's called a spider super stripe, which is a lelic animal when you breed to a yellow belly. So in a way you could almost say, all right, this could be a spider super stripe even though the spinner female certainly wasn't supposed to be a specter which would cause it to be that but there's still some areas of this animal that don't quite look like a super stripe with that said I do think whatever is going on in this clutch is definitely in the same complex as a super stripe a puma a highway or a freeway maybe it's the same and maybe that's another mutation that we just kind of stumbled upon and take a look at this one right here this is basically that same mutation just added pastel. And again, I've seen some pastel spider super stripe that look relatively similar to this, but they're a little bit different and the fact that this isn't supposed to be a specter and it just kind of popped up makes me think that maybe it's something brand new. I'm not 100% sure yet. Regardless, whether it's a super stripe or not, I'm super excited about it. And then we hatched this one out of the same clutch too, which I think is kind of similar to a lemon blast super stripe. So again, you're seeing some similarities with the super stripe and whatever's going on in this clutch. Whether it's a specter that just happened to pop up in my collection or there's another mutation that is linked to yellow belly, a lelic just like the yellow belly specters or sparks or gravels, I'm not 100% sure. Again, there's some polymorphism, which basically means animals can look a little different from individual to individual. So there's certainly a chance that this could just be a really cool looking super stripe clutch, even though I didn't know it was specter, or it might be something completely different because these animals certainly came out breathtaking. Regardless of what the genetics are behind it, it's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and keep this entire clutch and we're going to go downstairs and show Kelsey and then look at the adult female and see if we see anything that's unusual about her. So anyways, I just couldn't be more excited about that surprise clutch. Again, I said it before, when you produce something that is unexpected, it kind of really puts a cherry on top of an already amazing snake hatching season. I know a lot of people were asking about Speedy when I was kind of updating all my pet reptiles so uh, I haven't given you guys a speedy camp especially not with the new pond in the backyard so let's go ahead and see how speedy likes the new environment all right 
so I'm gonna take these baby ball pythons and show Kelsey, and then we're gonna go ahead and find the adults. Kelsey, guess what? I've got a present for you. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> take a look at some of these crazy babies that we hatched out of this clutch. Wow. So uh, I wanted to show you them and kind of first off say, isn't it awesome? These you are know, beautiful. <laughs> I know, look at this one here. I mean, that thing is crazy cool. Oh my gosh. Cool. Isn't it neat? I mean, that, that thing is That's amazing. I know, I love that thing. And, and look, at I mean, there's a bunch of them in here. This one is crazy too. This came from a spinner clutch bred to a pastel ivory. So I know you know which females lay. And this goes back to that kind of keeping really good data. You know, remember I always talk about we mark the clutch numbers, we mark the females, we mark the dates. That way when something like this hatches out, we can go back and we know exactly what female and exactly what male so we can duplicate it next year or change it, whatever we decide we want to do. So uh, anyways, I wanted to show you these guys first just because I knew you'd be really excited about it. And then I think that we should try to find the female and just see if there's any chance that there's something goofy going on. She's supposed to just be a normal spinner. So uh, what do you think of these guys anyways? I think they're they're really pretty. Just the pairing, the pastel ivory to spinner, that doesn't make any sense. I know. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought when I opened up the box this morning in the incubator. I'm like, this does not make any sense. But I saw this guy first right here, this little monkey here, and I was just blown away. I mean, I love the way that animal looks. Just look at the pattern on it. And then, of course, I saw this one, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. And then lastly, this thing here is just ridiculous. I mean, that's crazy. So uh, anyways, uh, let's find that female and let's okay, compare it yeah. to a normal spinner. Here she is. This is the mama. Okay, so that's the mom there. I'll be totally honest with you, she kind of looks like a spinner. I mean, she doesn't look that different at all, does she? I mean, her belly looks about the same. Her, and the pattern certainly looks like a spinner ball python. So, um, it's gonna be interesting to see like what another normal spinner looks like and just see if we can compare the two and see if we see any differences because I'm gonna be honest with you, just looking at her like this, it just looks like a normal spinner to me, but she's definitely carrying some interesting genes. So uh, let's look at a normal spinner and compare. Okay, so this would be another normal spinner. You can kind of see very similar patterns and colors. Uh, I guess we'll put them right together and just see what they look like. Okay, when you put the other spinner together with the mom, there's no doubt that it's a lighter color. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, definitely that it's a much lighter color and you can see like the pinstriping is thinner too. So yeah. what's going on with that? Yeah, I mean, maybe, now the question is, is could she be a specter or she another mutation? Because uh, again, I kind of look back on the history that I knew of this girl and there's no specter in her bloodline whatsoever. So, uh, but you can definitely see the difference between the darker, more bold animal and this being a little bit more aided and a little bit more reduced. Hmm. That really has me perplexed, but uh, what do you think? I mean, I think we should probably just raise these up. And Absolutely, keep them all. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey is like me. She's like, keep them all, keep them all. So I think we're just gonna keep the whole clutch. Uh, we'll breed some, we'll probably make that same breeding next year and see if we get the same results. And then when these guys get to size, we can breed them and start just kind of getting to the bottom of it. But unfortunately, it's gonna take us two or three years. But hey, next year we can see if we get the same clutch. So uh, Mama looks really good. Looks like she's beefing back up and she should be ready to breed next year. So uh, there you have it. Just the adventures of the life of a reptile breeder. getting down to the end of the hatchling season when it comes to colubrid snakes and it's been a really cool year. We've had some really incredible animals. Let's just see what hatched out today. Uh, here is a whole bunch of Pueblin milk snakes. Look at those guys. And what is a, what, does anyone know what like a bunch of snakes is called? I mean is it a, a swatch of snakes? <laughs> what, what is a, a group of snakes called? Um, Go ahead and comment down below. I'm sure someone can Google that. Regardless, this is a swatch of little beautiful Pueblin milk snakes. Here's some more milk snakes that are hatching here, but these of course are albino Nelsons and normal Nelsons right here. They're always absolutely gorgeous. And I tell you, as you get down to the end of the colubrid hatch season, I start to get a little bit bummed out because it's almost like a little bit of an addiction, to be honest with you. Every day you come in and you go, the first thing you wanna do is like, oh, what hatched? And you never know, because you know, you never know what's gonna hatch. I mean, not only could it be really cool mutations of snakes or even really pretty wild type snakes, but but you know, I've hatched out three or four 
two-headed snakes. So every box you open up, you're like, could I get that surprise and get another two-headed snake or whatever the case may be. But anyways, even just a normal corn snake is really a beautiful snake. Oh, and speaking of beautiful snakes, oh, look at that one little guy right there just sticking his head out. This is actually some more Mexican black king snakes. And look at how gorgeous those snakes are. You know, again, Mexican black kings are ridiculous and, and fast becoming probably one of the most popular colubrids in the pet trade because every time we put some up for sale, they sell out within an hour or two. So uh, we do have some more going up on the website because as they're feeding and getting established, we're putting more and more up. So that's it for the hatchling snakes today. Uh, again, we have maybe about 20 or 30 clutches left and then we're going to be done. And then, hey, before you know it, we're going to put them in hibernation and then they'll be up and they'll start breeding again. So it's a cycle every single year. You know, let's have a minute of real time talk here before I get out of here and we're going to go film some fun stuff with Noah and Lori. And then actually me and Noah are going to go to the Red Wings game tonight, the hockey game at the new arena. So it's going to be a really exciting night. But one thing I wanted to tell you guys is, you know, I try to always be upbeat and positive because that's what I want to do in life. But that doesn't mean that every day, all day, things are just rosy here. Listen, you have the ups and downs, but you try to take the most positive outlook on things as you possibly can. But that being said, I don't want you guys to think that I just live in a bubble here. I mean, there are good days and there's bad days and, and that's just kind of the way it is. And, and you got to remember, there are always people that are trying to bring you down. If they see you happy, they want you to be miserable because maybe they're miserable. And, and trust me, guys, I deal with hate every single day. I mean, people pick apart every single thing I do. Even when I do something really awesome like build the pond, there are people that tear down how I built the pond because it wasn't good enough. So the point is, is that, you know, you can dwell on the negatives or you could just do the best you can do to be positive. And hey, that doesn't mean that when you guys notice something that I do that is not right, that I don't listen to you guys. If I can fix it, I'm going to fix it. But you know, we do the best we can do and hey, we all make mistakes. So anyways, I just wanted to kind of get that off the plate because I know some people struggle with that. They say, Brian, why are you always so upbeat and happy? The truth is I work on it all the time. You know, I don't wake up in the morning and just everything is perfect. I work every day to try to be happy and to live life to the fullest. And I always want to encourage you guys to try to find that kind of happiness as well. But don't think that if you're having a bad day that it's something wrong. That's just part of life. But uh, as long as those bad days don't outweigh the good days. So uh, anyways, that's just for me. I'm going to get out of here, go meet up with Lori and Noah. We're going to play a really cool game. I'll show you a little piece and I'll put a link in the description to Noah's vlog channel. You guys do me a favor. Make sure to subscribe and and give support to Noah. I love him to death, and it's so great that you guys support my entire family. So anyways, what do you say we get out of here? Okay, so this is what we're gonna do here. These are actually noise-canceling headphones, and we're gonna plug them into low music so that the person wearing this can totally not hear whatsoever. Then each of us are gonna say a couple sentences to the other one, and the person with the noise-canceling headphones has to try to guess what that sentence is. So uh, it should be pretty funny, I think. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description so you guys can watch the whole video. I have a feeling it's gonna be hilarious. I saw this girl with the most amazing boots. I saw this girl with the most amazing boots. I'm gonna slap you. What are you talking about? You saw a girl with amazing boobs? Ow! Don't hit me! All right, so if you want to see the whole video, and hopefully I don't get my butt kicked by Lori, I'll put the link down in the description. All right, guys, so a couple things. Number one, that was extremely funny. Number two, it was so much harder than I thought it was going to be trying to read someone's lips. It was hilarious, so definitely check out the video. Again, the link is down in the description. For tonight, Noah and myself are heading to Little Caesars Arena for the very first time for a hockey game, the Red Wings game, so it's gonna be absolutely epic. So I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys mean the world to me. Can you do me a couple favors really quick? Can you hit that like button and get this video as many likes as possible? Also, turn the post notifications on. Remember to be kind to somebody, and I promise I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow.